guys, today I'm going to be reviewing the Ordinary L-Ascorbic Acid Powder. I have gotten a lot of requests to review this. Uh, it's new and it claims that you just take this powder and mix it into whatever skincare product you want, whether it be your moisturizer or some other serum, and boom, all of a sudden you have all of the benefits of using L-Ascorbic Acid in your skincare routine for the low, low price of $5.80. Is this too good to be true? What exactly is the point of putting L-ascorbic acid on your skin? It's really popular and you'll see a ton of serums everywhere you look. L-ascorbic acid is an antioxidant which is naturally present in your skin and with age, um, it starts to become less abundant. It has many vital roles in skin health and it scavenges free radicals that are generated uh, upon exposure to ultraviolet light, pollution, other environmental stressors, and it's those free radicals that um, ultimately go on to destroy collagen and age the skin. So having vitamin C there to kind of mop that up helps. L-ascorbic acid has been shown when applied topically to help in reducing the burden of photo damage upon exposure to ultraviolet radiation. It's been shown to brighten up hyperpigmentation and improve skin uh, tone. And it also, with long-term use, has been shown to boost up collagen production. Wow, sounds magic. However, there are a lot of limitations with L-ascorbic acid, AKA vitamin C. First of all, it is inherently unstable. And it, what I mean by that is it readily oxidizes and degrades on exposure to light and air. It's just not a very stable compound. Manufacturers have gone to great lengths to attempt to stabilize L-ascorbic acid so that it can be something that is stable enough to apply to the skin. SkinCeuticals, for example, has a patent on their L-ascorbic acid where they combine ferulic acid and vitamin E, and that's actually been shown, that particular patented formulation has actually been shown in a lot of the studies to, to do these things of brightening up areas of, of pigmentation, boosting up collagen production, etc. It's really, really expensive. Um, other manufacturers have done things like add a phosphate to, um, to vitamin C. Unfortunately, the phosphate makes it more difficult for it to get into the skin. And a lot of these modified versions of vitamin C, they have to, not only do they have to get into the skin, but they also have to then be converted to L-ascorbic acid once they get into the skin and then subsequently do the things that L-ascorbic acid can do. Um, so that's an issue with a lot of these stabilized forms is that we don't actually know if they get into the skin and once they're there, if they're converted to, to L-ascorbic acid and if in fact they do these things. But that does not stop manufacturers from using those. The other limitation of L-ascorbic acid is that it's water soluble and it's charged. So getting it into the skin, you've got this waxy barrier. It's really challenging to actually get it into the skin because it's charged and it's unstable and it's water soluble. So it wants to be in watery things. The other issue with L-ascorbic acid is that in order for it to get into your skin, it has to be at a low pH, less than four. Otherwise, it, you know, it won't work. I can't believe The Ordinary came out with a stupid powder. I mean, given everything that I've told you about how complicated and how technical formulating a vitamin C serum is, the fact that they would just come out with this powder of L-ascorbic acid and make consumers, try and make consumers believe that they could just mix it into their moisturizer and it would work the same as L-ascorbic acid has been shown to in studies is just bad in my opinion it's bad marketing um you you know if you were to use a skincare product it would have to have a ph of at least four ideally lower in order for the l-ascorbic acid to to work and it can be hard to know the ph of your skincare products and usually they're not that low uh, they're usually somewhere around eh, maybe four to five um but yeah i mean so even if you had the ph correct uh, how do you know that you have the, a, a good concentration in there? You, you really want anywhere from 10 to 15%. 20% would probably be okay, but um, studies show that you need it to be at least 10%, but much greater, especially beyond 20%, is super, super irritating. And I'm just not sure that consumers are, you know, I mean, I guess if you got out of scale, it's, it's just really hard to do that 
consistently and then you've got to worry about the pH uh, being right and the other issue that can happen with this, this powder is that it can crystallize on the surface of the skin and just not be doing anything and or even worse crystallize on the skin and make what are called hot spots or areas where you have just kind of a, a concentrated glob of crystallized vitamin C that can be super irritating and cause problems for people. So this powder is a horrible, horrible idea. Um, it is $5.80 that you should not spend. <laughs> In the case of the SkinCeutical CE Ferulic, I would not be surprised if the majority of the benefit from that product has to do with the ferulic acid and perhaps the vitamin E. Vitamin E and ferulic acid are both antioxidants. Now they stabilize the L-ascorbic acid um, and they the, the pH of that product is such that the L-ascorbic acid can get into the skin in theory and do its thing and, and it's stable. But you know the, the outcomes, the benefits, I wonder to what extent it's, it's more the ferulic acid and vitamin E. You know, I made a video a few years ago <laughs> telling people that yes, I am a board certified dermatologist, but no, I don't use vitamin C serums. Cause like I said, they're unstable, they're fickle. It seems unlikely that it's actually getting into the skin. I was like, you know, I'm just not gonna, just another thing to buy. I'm not gonna push it onto patients because it's, you know, the ones that seem to work are super expensive. Yeah, but when I made that video, I offended so many people. <laughs> It's shocking. I mean, a little dropper bottle could be that important to people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to use it, fine. Um, but I don't recommend this powder garbage. I think it's a waste and uh, and potentially harmful. Like I said, it could crystallize on the surface of the skin and cause irritation and problems. I've seen companies come out with this powder garbage for a few other ingredients as well. Yeah, don't waste your time on any of these powders. It's just another dingy, uh, Thing. And once they figured out that they could sell consumers individual ingredients in little dropper bottles, now, now they've gotten taken it even a step further and they're not even bothering to reconstitute the active ingredient. They're just letting the consumer do that themselves and claiming it's gonna work. Just get a product that has the ingredients formulated already in them. Yeah, I've never been a fan of companies that do the dropper bottle thing where you mix stuff together. Um, it can cause issues. You don't get even, even distribution, you don't get consistent application, and you can develop hot spot areas where you're gonna get excessive irritation and then gaps elsewhere. It's just, I don't know, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know, skincare, it's not a baking mix, it's not a recipe, and I think that that is misleading in and of itself. And formula, product formulation, it's, it, just, it just throws the whole industry out the door. Like all of these teams of R&D that focus on trying to perfect their formulations to get good absorption and consumer and, and tolerability, um, like, to just throw all that out the window and tell the consumer, oh, it's cool, you can do it yourself with no background in cosmetic chemistry or anything like that. Like people can just DIY. Uh, they, they're misleading. The ordinary, a lot of these companies, they can be a little misleading in their marketing because they make it seem as though, hey, we're using evidence-based ingredients and simple and we're not like, you know, trying to make a bunch of claims or whatever but then they go and do stuff like this and it's just like or like use a niacinamide serum at 10 percent like okay the studies show five percent calm down like what well, wh why are you trying to make consumers feel as though 10 percent is better when we have no data for that um and then paula one upped it with her 20 percent it's just like i can't you know i mean stick to stick to the percentages in the studies and stop trying to seduce consumers into your dropper bottle of goop versus another one it's like, yeah that's those are my thoughts on the ordinary l-ascorbic powder comment below though on if you would like me to review their other vitamin c serums uh i would be happy to do that but i hope you guys enjoyed this vid if so give it a thumbs up share with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye <laughs>